Hi, this is Sarah Mikesa with the Pig Site, and today we're here with Dave Piper. He is the Chief Veterinarian at the National Pork Board. Thanks for being with us today, Dave. Uh, thanks for having me, Sarah. Um, let's talk a little bit um, about African swine fever and what's going on around the world. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's start out with China. And we're not hearing a lot of new news out of China. Uh, a few breaks here and there um, that they are reporting out through the official media. But we also have been in, in discussions with veterinarians that are working within China, and it is nowhere near under control in China. They, they still have issues with African swine fever. They're still having out outbreaks, and they're still losing pigs to African swine fever. So uh, it's going to be a long time before China gets that situation cleaned up. Um, moving from there, I do want to talk a little bit about Russia, too, because we haven't talked about Russia for some time, and we haven't seen a lot of new news coming out of Russia. Remember, it's it's still primarily in feral swine within Russia. Um, but now in the last week or two, we've seen reports on Russians, on the Russians doing some testing in pork products within, uh, within their country, products that have generated, been generated within Russia. And then before they're consumed, they're, they're testing them for African swine fever and they are finding some virus in some of those products. So it continues to circulate some and is a definite risk for commercial swine within Russia. Um, from there, we come back around and we talk about what everybody's been talking about since September 10th, and that is the outbreak that is now happening in Germany. Um, that outbreak right now in Germany is uh, completely in feral swine. It's completely in the Bradenburg state in the uh, east part of Germany. Um, that state is uh, a long ways from where they have most of their commercial production. Mo from where they have, where they found those feral swine uh, positive in that state, it's about 300 miles to their commercial production. So, so far, all their findings, and there's been 90 plus total positive findings in feral swine, but so far all those findings have been in feral swine. But the thing for us to learn there though too is once they found it in feral swine, that commercial production was banned for exports by most of their partners, by most of their trade partners. Now they can continue to export within the EU, but outside of the EU, most of that has been banned. It remains banned to this day, and they're still working to try to be able to regionalize and bring back that trade that they lost due to it just being in feral swine, and it continues to just be in feral swine. And so, Dave, what is the risk of it entering into uh, commercial operations? Based on what we know from other outbreaks and other experiences, what's the likelihood? Yeah, the, the, what I'm hearing is in that part of Germany, there's only, for the most part, very small farms haven't seen any positives even though they're testing on those small farms. Of course, there's always risk that there's a contact between those feral swine and, and commercial swine on those small farms. But Germany right now has really walled off that area, won't allow animals out, won't allow hunting of the feral swine within, um, within that area, won't allow product out of that area. So they're working really hard to keep it concentrated in that, that small area of Bradenburg State where it's currently at. Um, but there's always the risk that, especially product-wise, that you get somebody that either moves a product illegally out of there or potentially even moves um, illegal live animals out of there, and yeah, it will spread then. But to this point, they have not seen that occur. And I mean, we know from a little, I don't know, what, maybe a year ago I was talking with you and you had mentioned that Germany was literally building a fence and a wall, like right around their area to protect. Yeah, what they had was they, in that area too, they had this fence. They had a fence between, uh, right on the border with, with Poland, because that area of Poland, as you cross out of Bradenburg State and into Poland there, that's where that positive area, one of the positive areas is within Poland. So they were very concerned with not only feral swine crossing the border coming into Germany, but also product crossing, you know, like a sandwich, just coming over with a trucker from Poland and then being discarded within Germany. Um, so they had put into place um, a fence. It wasn't a permanent fence. Um, it was a fence that they were trying to work to keep the feral swine out. It looks like, well, we don't know. We don't know if feral swine tracked it in or if a sandwich tracked it in, but it didn't keep the virus out, obviously. And they're uh, working now to improve that fence and make it a more permanent fence along that border with Poland. Very good. Well, are there any, before we exit this, just are there any other areas of concern or any other areas or hotspots that, that you here in the U.S. are watching? Yeah, you know, Romania too continues to be a, a hotspot for ASF. Um, it, it, they do not have it under control within Romania and they may not in fact have the infrastructure to be able to get it under control. 
So, so it's always a concern. You know, going beyond even ASF too, we've seen uh, some movement of classical swine fever uh, in Japan and it's moved to the, the mainland of Japan and into the heart of Japan and has moved thousands of miles across Japan with this new finding in Japan. So let's not forget the other foreign animal diseases and classical swine fever and what's going on in Japan needs to be on our radar too. Very good. And are they a country, uh, Dave, that can control it and are trying to mitigate all these things that are happening there? Yeah, Japan has a very strong animal health infrastructure. Um, if they can find it, in their country, I think they have a great chance of controlling it. Very good. All right, well, thank you so much for all this information today. We really appreciate it. You bet, thank you, Sarah. This is Sarah Mikesell with The Pig Site.